And Kelly Sue Park was acquitted of murder this week when a jury in a downtown L.A. courtroom found her not guilty on charges of first and second degree murder in connection to the 2008 strangulation of 21 year old aspiring actress and model Juliana Redding. Joining me now with more is Times criminal courts reporter Jack Leonard, who covered the high profile trial. Jack, so give me the details. Bring viewers who aren't uh, particularly familiar with this case up to speed. Sure, this is a case that revolved around a lot of DNA evidence uh, from Park that was found at the crime scene. Uh, Juliana Redding was strangled in her Santa Monica apartment, as you said, in 2008. Uh, when police arrived, they found that the front door to this apartment uh, locked from the inside. Uh, inside, they find uh, Juliana, as I said, strangled on her bed uh, after what appeared to be a violent struggle, whoever killed her. Uh, there is gas filling the apartment from a stove that has been left on, um, and there's a candle actually burning in a living room. Uh, so prosecutors argued that the killer had tried to blow up the evidence uh, after they had left. And um, Juliana's cell phone had been used to, to make a, a 911 call that had never gone through. So authorities te you know, check the crime scene and they find Kelly Sue Park's DNA on the inside of the front door. They find it on the victim's cell phone, on a knob of the stove that was left on and they find it on her neck, uh, the victim's neck and her tank top. So that was really the prosecution's case. The defense argued that DNA is not the be all and end all here, that it doesn't tell you how it got there, and that maybe uh, Kelly Sue Park's DNA could have been transferred at some point to the apartment by someone else or by some other means and ended up there. Okay, and now there was, uh, there was also a doctor who allegedly was somewhat involved in this. Tell me about that. Yeah, that's really interesting. The prosecution's case also um, largely connected Kelly Sue Park to the victim through this doctor, Dr. Munir Ueda, who has never been charged with anything. But the prosecution's theory was that Dr. Ueda had dated um, Juliana Redding the year before, briefly dated her, and while they were dating, offered Juliana's father, who was a pharmacist, uh, a job, and that they had been involved in business negotiations uh, up to just five days before the killing, when uh, uh, Juliana's father broke off the, the negotiations. And so that would be the motive for the killing, sort of a, an anger or a fury. Um, Park worked for Dr. Ueda, and the prosecution introduced evidence showing that there was more than a million dollars in payments from the doctor to uh, Ms. Park. Um, some of it around the time of the, uh, the killing and some of it uh, later. Um, what's interesting here is, as I said, you know, Dr. Wade has never been charged with anything. He denies through his attorneys that he had any involvement in this. Um, the jurors never heard that prosecutors believed that he fled to Lebanon once um, Kelly Sue Park was arrested, uh, and that he was paying for, that prosecutors believed that he was paying for uh, Ms. Park's defense. Okay, so we have a, uh, an alleged relationship between the doctor and Ms. Park. We also have, um, uh, you know, all this DNA evidence. Mm -hmm. There seemed to be a lot of this DNA evidence. How do you think jurors kind of came to the conclusion of acquittals? That's a great question. And jurors never talked to the media afterwards. They actually left via a freight elevator in the courthouse to uh, presumably to avoid reporters. So we don't know for sure. Um, the defense uh, says they believe that, that this is not a surprise because um, they, they raised a lot of questions about the prosecution's theory. Uh, mostly, you know, um, they suggested that there was no evidence uh, to show why someone like Park, who had no uh, record of violence, uh, would suddenly commit such a brutal crime. Now, uh, on the prosecutor's side, they're also not saying anything after this, um, you know, after this verdict. But uh, last year, prosecutors were prevented from uh, presenting evidence to the jury that they say would have shown that Park acted as an enforcer 
for this doctor, had gone out and uh, tried to intimidate uh, other people who'd run afoul of the doctor, business people, uh, into um, you know paying uh, whatever money the doctor uh, felt like he owed. That was what the prosecution argued. The defense argued that the, these were that the prosecution had you know distorted these events and that she was merely uh, encouraging people to pay up a judgment that they owed, and that there was a far cry from doing something like that to actually strangling somebody. Now, tell me about some of the emotions in the courtroom once the not guilty verdict was read. It was really raw in the courtroom yesterday, as you might expect. Um, the trial has been attended by the um, victim's family, which filled you know, at least one row of the courtroom, and also uh, Kelly Sue Park's family and, and supporters, um, who've been there in daily attendance. And so you knew that there was going to be whatever happened one group of people who'd been there were going to be extremely upset. And when the verdict, shortly after the verdict was announced, and the judge had pulled the jurors and had left the bench, uh, that's when the emotion spilled out. Uh, some of the supporters of the victim shouted murderer at Kelly Sue Park. Uh, uh, other, uh, one man stood up and shouted, this is a travesty of justice. Uh, uh, someone else shouted, you know, go to hell to her. Uh, the bailiff stepped in, said he didn't want to be taking anyone to jail, but he had to separate the families and let the victim's family move out first and wait until the courthouse was clear before he, um, or before that court corridor was clear before he let out uh, Kelly Sue Parks. All right, very yeah. emotional scene indeed. Thanks okay. for the insights, Jack. Uh, you can read Jack's story on LATimes.com along with other trending headlines.